Hello everyone, welcome back to the Drive Guide and today we have a little bit of a different video for you because instead of a car we are going to be reviewing this. This is a fire truck and today we are going to do just a brief walk around, show you everything that's in the vehicle and answer the question, is it worth $400,000? That answer is coming up here on the Drive Guide. So this fire truck we have in front of us today is a Spartan Metrostar MFD Custom Pumper and it's powered by a 10 litre straight six Cummings turbo diesel which in this specification produces 400 horsepower and 1250 pound feet of torque. That's pretty good seeing as that this vehicle when it's loaded up to its maximum capacity of water and other suppressants weighs over 38 thousand pounds so this engine has a lot working for it but Cummings diesel they're pretty reliable so let's start off with the side here I do want to very quickly note that this is an active vehicle so if there's a continuity error with my clothing or my hair it's very likely that this was called out in a rescue mission or a burning building or whatever it might be but let's carry on irrespective Thanks do have to go out to the actual fire department that are letting me do this today. I'm very grateful for that. Now with the fire engine itself, with your $400,000, you are going to get a lot of storage. So in this first compartment that we see here, this isn't storage. This is the main suction unit. So this is what the firefighters will use to direct water from the tanks to the hoses using all of the various discharges that you see here and of course you've got all of the various um, control panels and readings that will tell the firefighters what they need to know. Moving over here we will find some more storage so in here we'll find just some uh, floor mounting points wasn't here more of that some wires and then over here just a few mounts now see this little tow hitch down here we're going to get back to that in a minute there's a quite interesting story behind that as you can see we have some absolutely massive tires these are made by michelin they're 315 millimeters wide and i believe they are 22 inch rims yeah that's correct look at the size of them you could house a small family in there okay uh, carrying on in here you'll see the air tanks that the firefighters will use we have some uh, emergency blankets some belts water and then some snacks up there to uh, take care of someone in case you know they have gone off the road and need a little bit of comforting here is where the diesel fuel will go you have some power outlets right here and then when we lift this up We'll see some other rather interesting things. So these here are the jaws of life. And if we give this a quick pull, we can slide it out to look at them further. Now these things will quite literally take the roof off your car if let's say you're in a crash and can't open up the doors. These are the things that will get you out safely. And this sliding drawer that you saw here, that's a $1,400 option. But enough on that. Oh, you have to be a real firefighter to use one of these and I am definitely not. Uh, let's get a real firefighter. Carl, how do, how do we close this sliding drawer again? Push it in. Oh, I, would, I wouldn't pass the qualifications, would I? <laughs> All right, closing that up. No? <laughs> let's go around the back here. Right, so let's go and have just a real quick look up here. And to do that, we just need to untether this, put this down, lock that in. Let's go and see what's up top. So up here, there isn't really too much to see, but this is a totally walkable surface because right below my feet, is the actual water tanks and i'm told that this specific fire truck can hold up to 800 gallons of water 
which is pretty substantial. But what I love most about being up here is that you really do feel like you're on top of the world. It's rather quite relaxing. So beyond the ladder that I just so elegantly climbed down from, there isn't too much to point out back here, except for this toe hook again. So as I was saying earlier, there is one on the side and on the other side, and this is where you would mount a winch, which can be found right back here. We won't take it out as these pylons are a real nuisance to put back in, but this winch here can pull 9,000 pounds. And what it's typically used for is stabilization of a vehicle as you don't use a fire engine such as this to tow anything. That's not what it's built for. So beyond that, not much else to point out. Let's go check out the other side. So on the other side, no surprise, more storage. In this compartment here, we'll see some power tools, um, some compressors. We've got some gasoline and gasoline mixed with oil, some rope. Um, in this one here is where you find all your hand tools. So we've got the typical axes and um, what we got back here, we got clippers, got the massive exhaust down there. And again, another tow hook. Open up this compartment here. You'll see some more hoses um, and say like there's an oil spill, something like that. This will be thrown down onto the ground to help absorb it. Over here, this is the secondary pump unit. Again, on the other side, that's what they will typically use first. But down here, you'll see we still have some discharge points, um, the draining, and again, more pipes, or not pipes, hoses down here. And then what, what's right here is actually kind of cool. This is a tiny little step ladder that you could use to get to the uh, roof if you, for instance, can use the ladder. And they all fold up very easily like that. Now, that kind of covers the exterior of the fire engine. So let's go have a look inside. Now, for $400,000, you'd probably be thinking of uh, Bentley Mulsanne or Rolls-Royce Ghost. And those have such exquisite interiors using leathers, woods, metals that really prove the value of that vehicle. Well, that really can't be the same applied in here. You can see it's mostly <laughs> open-headed screws. I think this is a aluminium baseboard that's just been sprayed with some kind of protective coating. Um, the Spartan is quite that, Spartan. But it does feature some very interesting things. Inside the Spartan, it is actually kind of cool to note that at six foot four, I can almost stand upright. Not entirely though, but back here you have space for four firefighters to sit down and get ready to go. Now, as I was saying earlier, you're not gonna be expecting Bentley levels of refinement in here, but there is a feature that I can promise that you won't find in any vehicle available to the market. So when we fold down these seats here, you'll see they are rather quite short in the base, not suitable for someone my height, but that doesn't really matter. Where you see these straps here, a firefighter will slip their arms through and when it comes that they need to get out of the engine, the fire engine, they'll pull this yellow handle down here. Now this will release the air tank that's behind this sort of cavity and they'll be able to get out and go and deal with the situation. Other things I'd like to point out, um, here we have the radio, We've got a little more storage down here. This is a um, thermal imaging camera, so if the firefighters are approaching a blaze, they'll get this out ready to go to try and find out where the source of the fire is. Um, again, there is seating for four. Over here we have some fire extinguishers. And then up on the top here, we have the radio units that the firefighters will use to talk to each other when they're driving along. And I'm told it can get quite noisy when you're driving along. But let's get out. Let's go have a look at the passenger seat. S such a solid shut on that door. I love it. So getting in here, you see custom built for Canada's bravest, actual fire department. There's another one on the driver's side as well. But when we get in here, as you can see, we have the same seats as we did back there. And for this seat, more than those there, you feel like you're really leaning forward. Um, I don't really know why that is, but 
you're not going to be doing long journeys in this thing, or at least you hope you're not. So uh, interior comfort isn't the worry for the Spartan manufacturers and builders of this car. Um, I shouldn't say of this car, of this vehicle. Uh, other things to point out here, you do have a glove box and a few things to store things um, up above you, the, <laughs> the sun visors, and we have a fan in here too. And then you have so many buttons to play around with. We'll take them more from the perspective of the driver's seat as he is the one that's more responsible to use them. But as you can see, if luxury means you have more things to play with, this may be the most luxurious vehicle in the world. Right, let's have a look at the driver's seat. So coming round to the front, the things that will stand out to you is really just the size of it. When you're looking at it face on, it doesn't seem as big as what it truly is. But of course, you then move just a few feet to the side. It's like, oh no, it's actually 31 feet long. Things to point out here, you'll see this massive radiator back here. To actually access the engine, this whole cab will lift forward so that you can access the engine and all of its mechanical components underneath. Uh, we have the horns down here, another horn there, Spartan there, ready to go. And um, this is actually where you would put the engine oil as well. So coming round to the driver's side here. The first thing we have to point out is that pedal arrangement. Look at that there. Having them both on the other side of the steering column. I know the Lancia Stratos, a car is famously known for giving the passenger the pedals, but this is uh, a situation all of its own. So if we get into the driver's seat here, you can see down here we have the master switch and the ignition, some simple dyers, a massive wheel, um, got the stalks down here. Oh, you can tilt and telescope. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. But you are going to be driving this car sort of like this. Um, again, we've got all of the buttons you could possibly imagine. Here is the drive reverse neutral. We've got heated mirrors, it seems. We've got the light bars. And this is where you will access everything needed in driving a fire engine. Um, when we actually go for a ride, we'll get our firefighter friend to point out a few of the buttons to us because again I'm not qualified to drive this thing actually on that note if you did want to become a firefighter and wanted to drive a fire engine all you need to do in Alberta is pass the uh, air brake certification course because this is a single axle vehicle um, what that entails is I'm told a weekend in the classroom learning how to operate one of these vehicles and then once you do that you're good to go so I really think that is everything worth pointing out. So I think it's now time to go for a drive. So Carl, the biggest question I have to ask you is, when you drive one of these things, does it feel as big and as heavy as it is? Max, it does. This thing feels like an absolute ox. This is uh, certainly not your standard vehicle that you're going to be driving every day. I hold a lot of respect for the weight behind this thing mm -hmm. and also its capabilities here. But as we said earlier, this fire engine can hold up to 800 gallons of water. When you have a full tank versus an empty tank, can you really feel the difference in performance? Very much. You know that uh, a gallon of water weighs approximately 10 pounds. Okay. So when you shave that much weight off of a vehicle, yes, we are certainly going to notice a difference in the way the, the truck operates, the way it steers, the way the transmission shifts. Massive difference. What would you say is the most definitive aspect of driving this thing? Is it... Is it how fast it feels or what the steering feels like, the braking feel? What's the thing that stands out most to you? The biggest thing for me as a, as a driver, and I use that term loosely, uh, we are in fact operators, not drivers. 
Okay. Um, I can get to that in a moment here, Max, but uh, what stands out most is the cab over design. Right. This is so different from driving your standard vehicle with a hood. Yeah. And you'll notice as we go over bumps, there's, uh, there's, it's, it's a lot more bouncy. Yes. <laughs> I can certainly note that uh, from this seat here, I'm not getting the luxury ride that one might get out of a Rolls Royce, let's say. But I have never been in a vehicle that has so much presence on the road. This thing does stand out on the road. We've got the outside color here, which uh, uh, should certainly stand out. And not to mention all the flashing lights. And believe you me, the sirens here are loud enough. Yes. Is there a reason why this is painted green where you see most fire emergency vehicles are red? I would leave that for a discussion between you and the fire chief there, okay. I'm afraid. So with all of these buttons that we have down here, what are the ones that you are interacting with the most? I have uh, probably about three or four that I deal with here the most. Um, the first one is going to be this red one right here, and that's going to turn on all the lights. Okay. So as soon as I hit that, that activates all the lights all the way around the vehicle. Okay. The other ones over here that are out of sight are going to operate the air brakes, which we are, excuse me, not the air brakes, rather the engine brakes. Okay. Which we do not have on all the time. And that's adjusted according to driving condition. So when is it engine braking is using? When you're going down a hill, say? If I'm going down a hill, um, if I need to slow down, and uh, you know, if I've got lots of time to slow down, then yes. Um, if I'm driving on icy roads, I'm going to shut that engine brake either completely off or I'm going to leave it on a low setting here. If that okay. kicks in when it's really icy out, um, that can certainly lock up the rear end and have a swing around as the, as the truck tries to slow down. Right. Yeah, I can kind of feel from your perspective here, Max, about that turning radius here, eh? Yeah, yeah. Where it kind of feels like you're, you're ready to fall out the front window, and meanwhile you're sitting on top, actually, the, the front wheel's right behind you a little bit. Yeah. And it makes such a different driving dynamic. So... Before driving a vehicle such as this, had you ever driven like a semi-truck or any other vehicle like this size? No, I have not. This, uh, this here, I had a really, really good guy teach me how to drive in another truck. That was before we had this one. Okay. And uh, he taught me a lot of really good stuff in a short amount of time, and I've taken what I can and built on that. So what's, what's the life term of one of these vehicles? Is it supposed to last you 10 years and you get a new one, 20 years? Uh, that's probably department specific. Okay. This uh, this will have a serviceable life of oh boy, who knows how long. It depends how much money you want to keep putting into it when things start to get old and break down and wear out. So I think uh, what everybody wants to find out is what kind of noises we can make. <laughs> in just a moment here, I'll pull on the uh, on the air horn. You can just kind of hear what that's like from in here as well. Is that what this does here? You can go ahead and give that a tug anytime you like. Okay. Here we go. Air horn. Bye -bye. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> this is just the best day ever. Here we go. So I, I noticed there's different things you can uh, point to in terms of noises. Are, are they used in certain situations you would use one noise over the other? So the first one, the whale, uh -huh. that's our standard siren. We're going we're gonna to use that every call that we go out on. Okay. The rapid one, the next uh, the next one right beyond that, that will try and get people's attention if they're just really not getting out of the way. Um, an extra little thing to kind of help out, just get somebody's attention and ask that they please get out of the way. Okay. And that uh, that last one there, that's even more so, that super rapid little, uh, uh, little whipper there. Uh -huh. And that just does the job even more so. Okay. And that's if somebody's really being... It's very, very difficult to navigate around. And then I see this here. We've got something um, branded by Honda here. It says, start generator before applying load. What's that all about? Well, that's a generator up on the roof of this truck. Okay. And that will power up uh, a light outside, like a seat for some clean lighting. Okay. That also has, uh, I believe it's a 100-foot long extension cord on a reel. Mm -hmm. And that will pull out, and that generator provides power then to that extension cord as well. Oh, okay. Well, this has just been an experience I'm never going to forget. Thank you so much, Carl. Hey, listen, i got to say I'm really stoked to have the drive guide here hanging out doing a review of our uh, rescue truck here at Exhaw Flare. Oh. Thanks, Matt. Well, it's been quite a day.
You know, it's been a boyhood dream of mine forever to get a ride in a fire truck, but really isn't that every boy and girl's dream at a young age? Anyways, I've been comparing this fire engine to Rolls Royces and Bentleys, jokingly talking about, is it worth its $400,000 price tag? And you can never truly compare an epic machine like this to those luxury cruisers. At the end of the day, when it comes to an emergency situation, this is a vehicle that you are always going to depend on and it is always going to be reliable. And you can't really put a price on that. Thanks for watching.